Thank you very much, Angela. It is indeed a pleasure to be here in uh, Vancouver again. Um, I don't actually get out here often enough, and uh, at the Canadian Securities Exchange, I have to say we are truly grateful for the support that we've had from the Vancouver community over the years. Uh, Vancouver was really the first uh, uh, part of Canada who embraced uh, the Canadian Securities Exchange, and to this day, uh, some 50% of our listed companies are uh, reporting issuers in uh, British Columbia and uh, I think only about 30% Ontario. So in fact, we have a, again, a much greater uh, penetration of the, uh, of the market in Vancouver. And as I say, we've always been grateful for the support. Uh, I used to joke in the team in, in Toronto that if I ever didn't feel very good about what I was doing, I needed to get on the plane, go to Vancouver, have some meetings, and I'd come back and feel refreshed and energized. And you know, they really do like us. Uh, in any event, I'm going to give you a, a quick update uh, today before we get to the uh, meat of the presentation on the Canadian Securities Exchange uh, progress over the last uh, couple of years. And I think, you know, all of you are probably aware to some extent that uh, it's a good story, but uh, you may not be aware actually how good the story has been. In 2016, uh, which was a record in terms of uh, dollars raised uh, by companies listed on the uh, Canadian Securities Exchange at uh, slightly more than $400 million last year, we had uh, five IPOs, 36 new listings, uh, which was uh, a softer market uh, than what we saw in 2015 and 2014. But we saw bigger deals and more mature companies uh, coming to the exchange, which, uh, which we liked a lot. Um, as you can see, there was a good distribution of, uh, of companies that uh, were funded. And uh, in particular, uh, it's nice to see that uh, almost a fifth of the money was directed to the mining industry. Um, and that's a significant rebound uh, from, uh, from, from, from where we were before. Um, I'd have to say the uh, life sciences, that's actually a euphemism for the legal cannabis space, uh, accounted for almost half of the money, uh, as, uh, as you would expect. And uh, 366 individual transactions were done, so you know, significantly better than uh, one, one and a half per business day. Uh, so the financing, um, they may not be all that large, uh, but in aggregate they uh, have added up to an impressive amount of money. And uh, as I say, that's a lot of activity. Now, we were having some fun with numbers at the end of the year when we uh, looked at the uh, MIG report from the uh, Venture Exchange. And, uh, Again, you know, we've, we've, we've been beaten up over the years, not in Vancouver, I have to say, but in Toronto, uh, that nobody can raise money on the Canadian Securities Exchange, or that it's harder to raise money on the Canadian Securities Exchange, or, that, ven or that, that, that investors have a resistance point to investing in public companies listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. If you compare the ratios of funding to market cap, we were better than double uh, the Venture Exchange in um, December of 2016. And that's a, a number that uh, we saw, uh, you know, pretty pretty steady, almost double uh, the ratio of uh, companies listed on the venture exchange last year. And if you look at the uh, liquidity profile, again, um, you know, we've all heard about the uh, zombie companies listed on the uh, venture exchange, so that sort of drags down the uh, average uh, traded amount uh, for companies listed on the venture. But I'm not really supposed to mention the competition, am I? Okay, so the guys are around the corner and up the street. Um, the the uh, uh, turnover ratios, again, on the Canadian Securities Exchange last year were considerably better uh, than they were on the Venture Exchange. And I hope that, you know, this is not a conversation or a, a really a talking or a serious talking point anymore about, well, the Canadian Securities Exchange doesn't, uh, you know, have the appropriate liquidity. You've got to go somewhere else uh, in order to get liquidity. That's simply not the case. Many days, the most actively traded instruments in Canada are listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. We've seen that over and over again. <coughs> Here's another way of looking at uh, the progress of the organization. Um, again, we had a tremendous year from a trading perspective uh, last year, increasing uh, you know, the previous record uh, almost by uh, a factor of three. Um, and the same th ratio was uh, reflected in the, in the trading volume as well. I mean, any CEO would love to see that kind of chart, you know, for their business. Um, we've had, as I said, just a tremendous period of growth in the last 12 months. Looking, uh, since it is pre-DAC, and I suspect that we have uh, uh, predominance of folks that are interested uh, in, in the mining space, uh, we have 110 miners uh, listed uh, on the Canadian Securities uh, Exchange uh, at this point. 
Uh, historically, mining represented about 50% of the issuers, but uh, uh, with the uh, rise of more technology-oriented companies and, I'll say it again, the legal cannabis space, um, I'm still a little nervous around my mother explaining that, you know, we are the home of the legal cannabis business in Canada, but in any event, I'll get used to it someday. <laughs> but uh, the miners uh, raised $72 million last year, um, so not quite a quarter uh, of the funding. But again, that's a significantly better ratio than what we saw, obviously, in 2014 and 2015. Um, there were seven IPOs in Canada last year. Five of them were on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Three of them were conducted by miners. Now, what has happened, uh, you know, the, the few IPOs that we've had tend to be of the micro IPO variety. So they're done essentially to get the shareholder distribution, you know, to hit the minimum 150 uh, shareholders of a, of a board lot. And then typically what there's a follow on private placement uh, behind that where, you know, the 10, 15, 20 million dollars is raised by the company in order to uh, fund the first stage of the uh, project. Uh, market cap did grow considerably uh, over the course of the year uh, as a group up uh, almost 50 percent, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, we did see 122 individual financings uh, from uh, from that uh, sector. So coming up, uh, for those of you who are going to be in uh, Toronto uh, next week, it is next week, isn't it? I've been on the road a lot lately, so yes, it is next week. Uh, the Canadian Securities Exchange will be uh, continuing uh, some of our uh, time-honored traditions, and in particular the Tuesday lunch uh, in which uh, mining companies from the exchange are invited to do a two-minute pitch uh, to a uh, audience which has a number of uh, retail and institutional investors, brokers and exempt market dealers as well as advisors. Um, it's, uh, we usually have somewhere between 10 and 20 companies uh, do, the, uh, do the pitch and uh, we provide a sumptuous lunch at the uh, Intercontinental Hotel. Uh, so if you're able to uh, join us then that would be tremendous. We also have evening events but uh, I'm sure you're not interested in those. Um, but uh, we are having a, a fun event at the Mercado uh, with our friends from uh, MNP, the accounting firm, uh, on the Tuesday night, as well as uh, another law firm in Toronto whose name I won't mention because I'm at Clark Wilson. Um, and uh, it's possible, I've heard a rumor that uh, there's an after hours club that the Canadian Securities Exchange will also be partnering with uh, on the Monday and Tuesday evenings, maybe even Sunday night, I don't know. But uh, they, don't, they don't tell me that kind of stuff. Um, in any event, for those of you who want to follow uh, some of the uh, stories that uh, our issuers uh, are um, uh, involved in, uh, we have a, a quarterly publication uh, that comes out in both hard copy and, uh, but we really encourage you to take the electronic version. And uh, the details are here, available from our website, and uh, you can also sign up uh, to have it uh, pushed to your uh, mailbox. But uh, it's a publication in which we select somewhere between uh, four and six stories uh, per quarter, uh, talking about uh, some interesting companies that have uh, joined the exchange, generally speaking, recently, or have been active on the financing front. Uh, our cover story here was uh, Drone Delivery Canada, which is uh, the industry leader in Canada for practical use of drones uh, to provide for, in some cases, last mile delivery and, uh, and uh, provisioning. Um, they actually have stuff that flies now and they've got their NAVCAN licenses uh, arranged and uh, they are uh, working with the uh, post office and Perlator, I think at this point to uh, actually send stuff to your house or to uh, local uh, drop off points. Um, it's, uh, it, it is interesting. Uh, and that thing is about the size of a dishwasher by the way that you can see on the uh, and I think at this point um, it was about 35 pounds I think that it uh, can uh, fly around. Uh, so uh, soon, uh, soon to be uh, on the uh, on the horizon, and, and and they're not that loud either. It's actually uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, in any event, so you'll soon be seeing that uh, uh, hovering over uh, Vancouver, uh, you know, dropping off your Amazon purchases and stuff. Hopefully, same with air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not okay with driverless cars, but uh, I don't. For some reason, drones don't bother me at all. But. Uh, uh, in any event, uh, I want to thank you very kindly again for joining us and I look forward to catching up with uh, uh, any of you or all of you over a drink later on. And uh, thanks and uh, again, 
Uh, it's our pleasure that uh, you're able to join us here today. Thank you.